It's no secret that Mason Marangella from Vertex recently travelled to Nashville to conduct a two-hour interview with Dan Huff at his recording studio. Mason had told me this was on the card some time ago and knowing how excited I was about it was kind enough to share some behind the scenes footage with me while he was shooting the interview. We talked about the specifics of some of Dan's rigs back in the day and Mason confirmed many of Dan's preferred amplifiers and rack units not only for specific sessions but also for the first two giant records. One of the most interesting insights that came out of this conversation was Dan's penchant for double chorusing his clean sounds using both a Songbird Tri-Stereo Chorus and a Roland Dimension D. Recreating Dan's original rig these days would be prohibitively expensive to most, so I set out to find modern day recreations to capture that Dan Huff clean tone. The two pedals that I chose to recreate this sound were unsurprisingly the Free The Tone Tri Avatar Chorus and the Boss Wazacraft Dimension C Chorus. During my conversation with Mason, he told me that Dan recorded almost exclusively in stereo on the Giant Records. So to facilitate this within my setup, I picked up a GFI Systems Cab Zeus. At this point, my signal chain is guitar into my Mesa Boogie Mark IV. This is being loaded down and I'm taking the non-IR output from the Sir Reactive Load into a small pedal board which I set up, which has the Tri-Avatar Chorus and the Dimension C then going into both channels of the cab suit. Now, the first secret here is that I set one side of the cab suit to be a full range speaker. In other words, a DI. I'd heard that Dan, as well as many other players from this era, would often either blend in a clean DI with their amp sound or sometimes use exclusively a DI signal. The Cab Zeus's desktop editor makes it easy to treat both sides of the signal independently and I was surprised at how much closer blending in the DI signal brought me to that sound. However, that was nothing compared to this guitar. This guitar belongs to my good friend Jerry Devine. Jerry is a fabulous guitar player in his own right. He's also very active on the Tyler Owners Group and he was also an old friend of the late great Michael Caswell who was my teacher back in ACM days. Jerry and I talk often and when I told him I was planning this video Unbelievably, he didn't hesitate to send me his custom Dan Huff inspired James Tyler guitar. This may well be the greatest guitar I've ever played. It has a thin 59 neck, it has stainless steel frets, two point goto trem, Seymour Duncan hot stack pickups in the neck and middle positions like Dan's and a James Tyler Shark pickup in the bridge. Now, this is where things get really interesting. We have a mid boost control and a mid boost bypass button. We have three way toggle switches on each pickup, which do series, split and parallel. This is actually more than Dan's own previously 63, now understood to be a 64 Strat has, which only has series and parallel switching. It also has the rhythm lead circuit, kind of a blower switch, which when it is set to the up position, it defaults to bridge picker in full humbucking mode. Now, by my estimation, these pickups in combination with the mid boost and the parallel functionality, of the mini switches 
contributes around 30% of the sound. For the most part, I had the mid boost engaged, but with the pot turned all the way down and then using either the middle or the bridge pickup in parallel, sometimes in the in-between positions, sometimes a combination of those, depending on the song. And for this next example, I actually turned the mid boost control up about 30% as I found this was a great way of fattening up single note lines for that LA funk sound. Now I've taken you as far as the cab Zeus so far in the signal chain. The last part of the process was adding micro pitch shift, delay and reverb in my DAW. Now this was done the same way that I always do it, which is using the Sound Toys plugins and running all of those effects in parallel. Hopefully this gives you some new ideas about how to go about recreating a Dan Huff style clean tone. However, this is not the only way. There are many other alternatives that you could explore. This was predominantly using what I had to hand with the exception of course of this guitar. What I will say is that these pickups in conjunction with these switching configurations and the mid boost cannot be understated in terms of their impact on the sound. With that said, blending in the DI was also a huge component in getting closer to Dan's sound, so I would highly recommend that you try that out. If you'd like to learn the musical examples played in this video, the transcriptions are on my Patreon. As many of you know, I make no money from YouTube. I demonetize all of my videos so that you don't have to endure adverts, and I spend a lot of time recreating these backing tracks from scratch so that you can enjoy these videos without interruption. Patrons also get access to these backing tracks and it is a great way to support me in making these videos. Thank you to my existing patrons for their support. If you haven't checked out the Session Heroes Patreon page yet, please do so. I think you'd enjoy it. You can also help me out by subscribing, commenting and sharing these videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you again to Jerry Devine and Mason Marangella for their help with this video and their support. And I hope to see you all soon.